Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, innies, outies, and in between us. My name's Dan, welcome back to another Pack Reports. Today is Tuesday, April the 21st, 2020. Today we're starting with a bit of contradictory information. An unnamed Nottinghamshire police constable is due to appear before a misconduct panel at Nottinghamshire Police Headquarters in Arnold on April the 28th. Now there's very, very little information about what this is for, other than the constable will answer allegations relating to breaches of the standards of professional behaviour concerning discreditable conduct and authority, respect and courtesy. Now, the force have said that the misconduct hearing will be held in private, which seems to go against the usual line of transparency the police like to lead us to believe. They do, however, say that the outcome will be made public, which seems to negate the fact that he needs to have the hearing in private. I mean, I get that releasing information can sometimes taint a case against someone or put someone in danger, but surely once the hearing starts, that threat of tainting the case would be over. Anyway, as soon as any information becomes available on this, I will of course let you know what the Naughty Constable has been getting up to. Derbyshire Constabulary have apologised to a disabled man after giving the man a warning when his friend went to, to his house to cut his grass. Talking of grass, it seems that 63-year-old Adrian Rimmington's neighbours have done just that. Police attended Adrian's home after reports that the gardener had entered his property. Mr Rimmington, who could not mow the grass himself, said he passed the lawnmower cord through a window to his friend who came to cut the grass and at no time did his friend enter the property. He said, It's ridiculous, ludicrous. My friend lives nearby and he didn't come into my house. I'm disabled and he was simply helping me by mowing my lawn, as he has done for 15 years. He was being kind. He didn't deserve a police warning. Yes, that's right people. The police went out of their way to go to the house of Mr Remington's friend to issue him with a warning, stating that if they received another call about him contravening coronavirus restrictions, he would be issued a fine. A Derbyshire spokesperson added, Officers attending the address spoke to Mr Rimmington and subsequently the man who undertook the mowing. We have tried to speak to Mr Rimmington and his friends to apologise for our response to this, but have not been able to reach them at this time. There is some misunderstanding when it comes to incidents such as this and further national guidance has been issued today and this has been sent out to officers. The spokesperson said it was fine if someone is undertaking gardening work and they are observing proper social distancing. Maybe they should have told their constables that. Another misconduct hearing, this time in Thames Valley. Former Detective Constable Devjeet Hunjan is to face the panel on April the 29th via a, oh, another private hearing. <laughs> via a private telephone conference, the details of which are also said to be made public afterwards. The complaint against Hunjan was made on June 19th, 2017, and has taken almost three years to get to misconduct hearing phase. What a surprise. It is alleged that former Detective Constable Dev Jack Hunjan didn't get a statement from a key witness while investigating the sexual assault of a 14-year-old boy during 28 months that he was in charge of that investigation. If it's proved to be true, then DC Hunjan would have breached the standards of professional behaviour and it could amount to gross misconduct, which might result in his name being placed on Thames Valley Police blacklist for future jobs. That's what it says in the article doesn't say anything about the College of Policing's borrowed list. Former Cambridgeshire Police and Crime Commissioner Jason Abelwhite is off the hook after an investigation into him allegedly sending an indecent image to a vulnerable woman has been dropped after prosecutors said that the vulnerable woman encouraged him. The woman complained to police about Mr Abel White sending an indecent image. The matter was handled by the Independent Office of Police Conduct who sent a file to the Crown Prosecution Service to decide whether the 47 year old should face any criminal charges. The Crown Prosecution Service concluded the 50 year old woman appeared to encourage Mr Abel White, adding that she was flirtatious. The CPS investigation followed the visit when the woman was in a group being shown around by Mr, Ab Mr. Abel White. Within hours of getting home, she claimed he had initiated a series of Facebook messages that culminated with him sending her an indecent photo. It was after this that she called the police. 
In a letter, Crown Prosecution Service solicitor Kirsty Dyer told the woman, there is no evidence to suggest that the suspect considered the specific photograph to be indecent or obscene. Whilst I understand that you said you deflected away from his comments with being funny, but never encouraging. In my opinion, the conversations taken in their entirety do appear flirtatious. I accept that you did on occasion try, try to change the subject, but on others you appeared to encourage continuation of the type of conversation. Miss Dyer quoted an extract from one of the messages in which the woman told Mr. Abel White, I'm sure your truncheon is very impressive, Chief, but you'll have to wait till tomorrow to boast. The Crown Prosecution Service solicitor concluded that at no time did you make it clear that the innuendo was categorically unwelcome or shut down the conversations. Ms. Dye also said there is a suggestion that the same or a similar picture had been sent previously, but no indication of what your response was, if any. Now, hang on a minute. So if somebody gets hold of a girl in a nightclub and gets to kiss them, and then the following week, somebody tries to kiss that girl again, but she doesn't want it. And she says that his uh, attention is unwanted. Does that mean that they're gonna get away with it because she was okay with it the week before? No, doesn't, doesn't work like that, does it? Ms. Dice said there was insufficient evidence to bring a prosecution and said, uh, and she had concluded there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. On the issue of public interest, she said the IOPC had asked her to look at whether a charge should be brought under the Communications Act of 2003. She accepted the, the picture concerned could be described as indecent or obscene, but Ms. Dye noted that there is also a mental element to be considered. Case law makes it clear that this mental element is directed exclusively to the state of mind of the suspect and not the recipient. So in other words, if somebody sends you a picture of their dick, then providing their state of mind wasn't right at the time, they're gonna get away with it. That's what they're trying to say here. She said, I have to consider what the suspect's intention was when the message was sent and whether he either intended to send you an indecent or obscene message. So he just accidentally sent a picture of his dick. Well done. Her other consideration was whether he recognized the risk that it would be perceived as such. Well, as crime commissioner, I would think he did. She said, I do not believe the evidence shows this and as such, I cannot prove that element or part of the offence, she added. Mr. Abelwhite resigned his £85,000 a year post last November. It's believed he resigned over this incident. Now I have to ask myself why you would resign if you did nothing wrong and if you were faithful in the just judicial system. I also find that if I was to send a picture of my hot dog to a woman and she complained to the police, not that that's likely to happen. A complaint, I mean, and sending a picture. But if it were, I'm sure I'd be on the receiving end of some kind of punishment. Guess what, guys? The Chinese have bigger cojones than most Brits. Now, that's not a statistical study where I've measured all the ball sacks of Chinese folk. Uh, oh no, this is about what they will do to retain and hold on to their rights, while most Brits sit back with their so-called stiff upper lip, taking the anal pounding that we're faced with before sipping tea and congratulating the government on a jolly decent rogering. Hong Kong activists from the Hong Kong Civil Rights Front vowed to return to the streets on July the 1st after police rounded up high-level campaigners over the weekend, arresting 15 on charges of being involved in massive city-wide protests that brought the city to a complete standstill on several occasions last year. Hong Kong people will not back down in the face of mass arrests and will persist on the irreversible revolution of our times according to the front. The announcement comes two days after police in Hong Kong carried out a massive operation against high-profile democracy campaigners on Saturday arresting 15 activists on charges related to massive protests that rocked the Asian financial hub last year. Those arrested included the father of Hong Kong's democracy movement, 81-year-old Martin Lee. Also targeted was 72-year-old media tycoon Jimmy Lai, 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 don't know how to pronounce it, founder of anti-establishment newspaper Apple Daily, who was arrested at his home. Speaking after being released on bail in the afternoon, Martin Lee, who had never been arrested before, said he had no regrets about participating in the protests. 
He said, I'm relieved and very proud to finally be listed as a defendant after seeing so many brilliant young people arrested and charged. We've been pursuing democracy together, he told reporters outside Central Police Station. Police said the activists were accused of organising and taking part in unlawful assemblies in October and August last year. Five were arrested on suspicion of publicising publicizing unauthorised public meetings in September and October. All 15 people who were arrested are due to appear in court mid-May. Pro-democracy lawmaker Claudia Moe said on Saturday the local government is trying very hard to introduce a reign of terror. Sound familiar? They are doing whatever they can to try and silence, to take down the local opposition. But then united we stand, she said. It's so obvious they're choreographing all of their acts. Now, you know what this means, don't you guys? I mean, we can't have the Chinese one-upping us Brits. We need to instill a backbone into those we know and get them ready for their own fight. Now, as you saw over the weekend and no doubt heard in yesterday's PAP reports, PC3539 Needham from Lancashire Police has been made a YouTube star after his threat to a member of the public to make something up. Well, Lancashire Police did put out a statement following the incident which said they had apologised to the man and were looking to speak to him more about the incident. But at the time, there was no mention of any action against PC3539 Needham. Well, it now appears that PC3539 Needham has been suspended pending the investigation into his, what I would call, conspiracy to commit perjury, breaches of Section 26 of the Criminal Justice and Courts Act, and the complete belly flop failure to adhere to any of the policing standards of behaviour or code of ethics. Now, there's no further information at this time, but I will, of course, be keeping a close eye on the progress of this incident, and I will update you accordingly here in future PAP reports. Figures revealing the top 10 forces with the highest number of social distancing fines has been released. These are the areas with the highest number of fines for not following social distancing rules and the data is said to take into consideration the population of the area, the number of fines and the, rates, the rate of fines per 10,000 people. Lancashire Police came first place. Lancashire has a population of almost 1.5 million and its residents were found to have received 380 fines, which works out to 2.5 fines per 10,000 people. In second place was North Yorkshire with 1.8 fines per 10,000 people, 150 overall. And third place goes to Surrey with an overall number of 205 fines, which is 1.7 per 10,000 people in the area. However, Yet again, mainstream media are misleading the public in their reports, saying things such as There is only a limited number of activities for which people are permitted to leave their homes. These are shopping for basic necessities like food and medicine. One form of exercise per day like going for a walk or a run. Any medical needs like donating blood or caring for a vulnerable person. Travelling for work purposes where you cannot work from home. Now, there is nothing in the English legislation, at least, that says we're only allowed to take one form of exercise. This would be very difficult for those who walk to the spot where they want to start running from, as walking and running apparently are classed as two different exercises. They also say that the government stated that if you leave your home or gather in public for any reason other than those specified, then the police may instruct you to go home instruct you on how to stop your children breaking the rules, take you home or arrest you if you do not follow the instructions, issue a fine. Which again is a precarious claim as the police only really have the authority to do so if they believe you are breaching the legislation. Forget guidelines, they're not the law. If, for example, you do not speak to the police, then they have to prove that you're breaching the legislation or the guidelines, which is going to be, in many cases, very difficult for them to prove. When you say nothing at all. In fact, I would go as so far as to say that if people stay tight-lipped and got fines, then they should simply contest that fine. And with a reasonable brief, you should easily be able to get this overturned. Now that's not legal advice, by the way, just an opinion based on what I've learned about all of this situation. In fact, British Transport Police tried to prosecute a woman who failed to speak to them, although they did balls up. Uh, on the actual legislation 
they charged her with, the fact she stayed silent and simply put up with her time in the police cell until she appeared in court and then remained silent, silent ever more was her biggest winning factor as no one could prove she had done anything wrong without herself incriminating by talking to them. And I think that's very important for everybody to remember. Devon and Cornwall's road policing unit find a parent for giving their daughter a driving lesson in Camborne this morning. This morning, officers from Devon and Cornwall Road Policing Unit Alliance fumed. No taking your teenage daughter for a driving lesson is not an essential journey and is in contravention of COVID-19 legislation. Fine issued for this in Camborne area last night. Please follow government guidelines to protect the front line, protect the NHS. Devon and Cornwall Police has issued guidance on its website about how it is interpreting and applying the lockdown laws, but this did not cover driving lessons. See, and this is the problem when police are left to interpret the legislation and guidelines. There is a massive lack of consistency across the country. Their website says there are no specific guidelines or legislation that prohibit going for a drive. However, we ask that you only leave your home for essential travel. So it's a request, remember that. The NHS is already under extreme pressure and having fewer cars on the road will reduce the chances of serious road traffic collisions. Now, forgive me if you think I'm wrong here, but also let me know in the comments. But with less vehicles on the road and with the occupants of said vehicle being isolated inside their vehicle, is there much of an issue? Yes, of course, an accident could occur, but you're more likely to have an accident at home than you are to have one without driving, especially as there are less people on the road. Also, driving lessons may be classed as essential, especially, for example, if the person learning to drive is doing so in order to help care for someone. There is also no mention if they had been stopped prior to this time, which flushes the police's policy of engage, explain, educate and enforce down the drain, instead following their own opinions of how to act and skipping the two most important factors in that policy. A 62-year-old man has been arrested in Harwich after two police cars were set on fire outside Harwich Police Station. The vehicles were set alight just before 10.55 this morning and are said to have sustained significant damage. The 62-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of arson shortly after and is believed to still be in police custody. Essex Police, one of the forces who are so opposed to filming in public they've put posters on their police station windows, have asked anyone with information CCTV footage or dash cam footage to come forward. <laughs> I can see people lining up to help you out, Essex Police. Big thank you to Patreon supporters, AD, Audrey, Carl, Copwatch UK, Danielle, Dave, Dean, Holly, Ian, Jay, Marty Lad, Mr. Mina, Peter, President Trump and Rich. Your support is really helping me continue with these daily update videos. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.